Hi, I'm Ashley. Now today we're going to make the Ruth's Chris sweet potato casserole. It's perfect for your Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners. This recipe comes straight from Ruth's Chris restaurant and I make it every single year for our Thanksgiving get togethers and there's never any leftovers. My family loves it. It's not difficult to make. I am not a chef, so if I can make this, you can too. Trust me, it's easy. I'm going to show you exactly how to make it and let's get to it. Before we get into making the casserole, make sure to subscribe below if you love saving money and want more frugal living tips. I post videos here every single week. Now with this recipe, it makes about eight to 10 servings. Now with our Thanksgiving dinner, we have a lot of extended family come in. So there's about 30 people. I will always double and sometimes even triple this recipe. So feel free to do that. And I wanna be very clear, this is a comfort food. Now this beautiful sweet potato casserole is full of sugar. It has a lot of butter. This is not something you wanna make if you are diabetic or if you're on a diet. So I wanna be very clear about that. This is something that you may just have once or twice a year to indulge in, eat in moderation. But now that we've gone through all of that, let's get started making our casserole. So to start, we're going to go over the ingredients for the sweet potato mixture. All you're going to need are three to four sweet potatoes. How many you get is going to depend on the size of your sweet potato, but you're going to need three cups. So I try to get four large sweet potatoes. Uh, one potato should give you a cup, but I always like to buy one extra just in case. You're also going to need two eggs, one stick of butter, one cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Now the first thing you're going to do is cook the potatoes. I like to just cook them in the microwave. Um, I'll start around six minutes, check them, and then just kind of eyeball how longer I need to go. You can also bake them in the oven or you can boil them, whatever you prefer or what's easiest for you. But first we're going to cook these and then we are going to let them cool and then peel them. So while the potatoes are cooking and cooling, I'm going to go ahead and make the topping that we're going to put on later. What you're going to need for this is one cup of brown sugar, a third of a cup of flour, one cup of chopped nuts, and I prefer pecans, but if you want walnuts, you can do that too, and a third of a stick of butter. And we're going to melt this before we pour it on. So all we're going to do is just add everything together and mix it all up real good. So this is how it should look. It should be a little crumbly, just like this. And then we'll just set this aside until we're ready to put it on top of our casserole. My potatoes are cooked and cooled off. It's very important, make sure you have them cooled off so that you don't burn yourself when you're cutting and peeling them. Now all we're going to do is just slice a little right here. And it should peel off pretty easily, just like this. And that's all we're going to do is just go and do all four potatoes and put them in our mixer. Our potatoes are all peeled and I put them in here. I did slice them up a little bit just to make them easier uh, to mix. But what I like to do is just take a fork and just kind of fluff them up a little bit just to make it easier for the mixer to fully mix. And then once I finish doing all this, I'm going to add all the ingredients into the mixer. Uh, that includes the salt, the sugar, the vanilla, the butter, and the eggs. We're going to put all of that in here and then just mix it up real good until it's light and fluffy.
got everything mixed up and I did gradually increase the speed from low to high just to make sure it was all mixed in real good. I'm going to take this one and a half quart baking dish and we're going to lightly spray it with some cooking spray or butter spray just to make sure everything doesn't stick and then we're going to put it in to the pan and I did go ahead and preheat the oven to 350 degrees and we will bake it for 30 minutes. We'll take it out, put the topping on and bake it for another 10 minutes. That's how it should look. You're going to put it in the oven and I do want to mention that I did use all four potatoes. It might have been a little bit more than three cups but that's okay. It still tastes the same if you have a little bit more or less than what's required. I just like using up all of my potatoes so nothing goes to waste. So it's been cooking for 30 minutes and now we're just going to take our topping, mix it up just a little bit. Just gonna sprinkle it over the top and then we'll put it back in the oven and let it cook for an additional 10 minutes. product um, I just took it out of the oven and the top is nice and brown and crisp so we'll just let it sit for 30 minutes before serving and then you'll be ready to go so that's it um, our casserole is done we let it sit for 30 minutes before you serve just to let it cool and sit and congeal and everything as you can see pretty easy to make it's delicious um, some people like eating it as a side dish and others even eat it for a dessert uh, when we have Thanksgiving. So it's definitely a crowd pleaser and I hope you enjoy this. Leave any uh, questions that you may have in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Don't forget to follow along on Instagram so you can see some behind the scenes of life here at the Frugal Ginger House and any kind of deals and clearance things I may find. I hope all of you have a wonderful Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, whatever you're making this for, and I will see you next time.